good morning. I'm very happy to be here to do this presentation. Um, I'm going to do this. Th this presentation that I'm about to show you is really meant for a larger city, like uh, a Bogota, where, that has many millions of, of people in the middle of pastures, large scale operations. But what I want to do is I'm going to focus on a couple of points. And I'm going to make those points as though I were uh, here today representing the Houston Airport System in its effort to win a concession for the operation of the airport. How about that? Let me, so what would I say um, if I were doing that? If I were standing here today and saying, I would, we would love to be the operators of the, of the Barranquilla Airport and what we could do to, to further that presentation. I would start with the point that every city, every city in the world has as one of its key objectives economic development. It's got to. Because every city, like every business, has the objective to grow. You cannot remain small. You cannot, whether you're in business or whether you're in cities, you cannot remain so. You're, you have to have an objective to grow. And most cities, to the extent that they can, look to airports to say, you have to help us grow. And so then we as airport directors say, well, how do we do that? And so we'll figure it out, you know? And so um, the very first thing that an airport director has to do is to say, okay, what business are we in? What business? And for the Houston airport systems, we can tell you that we have two business models because we have three airports. We run George Bush Intercontinental, which is the full service long haul international airport. We have a smaller airport, Blake Hobby Airport, that is domestic only today, but next year will open as a regional international airport of the Americas. Because the focus will be of the Americas, for the Americas. The runways will only allow aircraft to reach the northern rim of South America and everything in between. That is a focus. And then we have, and those two airports have one business model. And that business model is the integration of transportation networks. That, that model brings airlines together from all over the nation and all over the world. And we, could, we connect it with ground transportation, buses and cars, in terminal buildings, to deliver what? To deliver destinations where people want to go, where business people want to go, where visitors want to go, where people want to go with family and visit friends, where cargo must move through and move out. And then we have a third airport, it's called Ellington, where the business model is different. The business model there, which is perhaps the start of every airport, is real estate development. It starts with the question, who is the customer and what does the customer want to buy and is willing to pay for? And where is the customer? And so at Ellington, since it is not a commercial airport, it is a general aviation military airport, the idea there is to use a aerospace or aviation theme. We have runways, we have land. There the idea is to create a customer. Because think about it, any business in the world, whether it's a city or, or a private sector, can't do anything until you can create a customer, someone that is willing, that sees something of value that you have, that is willing to pay for it. And so there, the customer we're looking to create are aerospace companies or aviation companies that may want to assemble, design, build, distribute, aerospace components or aviation components that we could then build buildings for, hangars, distribution centers, warehouses, um, for the development, assembly, and distribution of those type of aircraft. And in the future, in the very near future, that should we be able to find a company that will build spacecraft like x -Corp or um, scaled composites, Spaceship One, Spaceship Two, that these, or the Dream Chaser by Sierra Nevada Corporation, that these aircraft, these spacecraft, can actually take off and land at Ellington because we, in addition to having the ability for runways, we also have oxidizers, 
and we know how to load fuel, we know, load, know how to load oxidizers onto that spacecraft so it can take off and it can travel into space. Why? Because we see that the future of aviation, that's where the business should go, or where, what business we will be in, in the never near future, will be the merger of aerospace and aviation. And for that we mean the idea that you take a, an aircraft, take the SST, the supersonic transport, if you were going to build it today, that, that aircraft, instead of being built out of aluminum, would be built out of fiber carbon composite material. Very, very strong. Instead of having jet engines, it would have engines that would burn on superheated methane gas or an oxidizer. Instead of traveling at 60,000 feet, it would travel at 100, 110,000 feet. And instead of traveling at Mach 1, it would travel at Mach 4.5, making the time from Houston to Singapore under five hours. Am I crazy? No. That is coming in the next five to 10 to 15 years. And we will be ready, because that is what the business should be that we're focusing on, while today we focus on what the business is. So today, I'm simply going to talk about hobby and intercontinental, because that's what we do. So I'm going to talk about the growth of the Houston airport system, which is really nothing more than to say, what is the growth of the city of Houston? Because the two are inextricably linked. We basically reflect what the city of Houston needs. I'll talk about Latin America and the, and, and the very important role that Latin America plays for Houston, the international service at Hobby and how that came about, a global gateway and, and the positioning of Houston, and then we'll talk about some cargo operations. So the Houston airport system, as I say, is really nothing more than a reflection of the economy of Houston. So the economy of Houston today is the fastest growing economy in the United States. Out of the top 50 regions in the United States, Houston's number one, having grown last year at 5.2%. When you think about it, Houston has a, a GDP of $520 billion. If you look at it in terms of countries, the $520 billion would be greater than Argentina, than, than, than every other Latin American economy in Latin America except for Brazil and Mexico. All other economies, we would have a larger economy. <clears throat> we have a population of about 6 million people. That's about 2 million less than what you have in Bogota, about 8 million. So think about in terms of you know, size, relative scale. And we cover the world. One of the areas for growth, the most important area for growth, as you see it, is international. You have to be able to establish international connections. But very, and so international and Houston airport system is growing at uh, over 40% over the last year. Here's a very important that I want to make, because I saw in your presentation a point that um, I think is misunderstood. Airlines are not the creator of passengers. They are the suppliers of seats to destinations. They are suppliers to an airport. Kind of like um, a tire producer is a supplier to a car manufacturer. The tire producer supplies t tires so that the car producer can produce a complete car. Airlines are suppliers of seats to destination. They do not create passengers. When you go to an airline and you say, I want you to um, provide service, what is the first thing that they all ask? They don't ask how big your airport is. They don't ask how much you charge. They say, how big is your economy? And how many passengers will your, your economy generate? Now, what I'm going to bring to you is what your economy can generate. And if you have no passengers, they'll say, eh, I'm not interested. i got to go over here. Because this economy, this city, generates passengers. So every time an airline, you go to an airline, you say, hey, we would like service. They say, pencil it out. Your economy, mm, three billion, two billion, five hundred and eighty million dollars in these sectors, can making these connections, mm, eighty passengers per day each way. That's that's okay. I, yeah, I think I can make that work. And so, what you, what an airline pays you, is not for the terminal. It is not for the runway. It is access to your economy. 
So our business model, I will tell you, so how do we make money? It's very simple. We invest large amounts of capital in Hobby and Intercontinental Airport. We are about, we're about to finish $250 million in Hobby and creating a new terminal. We will be investing $2 to $2.5 billion in Intercontinental. And then we give away those assets to the airlines at cost or at some discount to cost. We don't recover all of our money from the airlines. Why? Because the airlines don't make money today first. And number two is that, eh, I can go to anything different. So we say, look, we will keep the cost you down as low as possible. And that means giving them a subsidy today. There's just no other way. But what do we do? When they provide the seats, they supply the seats to destination, passengers come through. And then we sell everything we can to the passenger. We sell them parking, we sell them concessions, we sell them rental cars, we sell them services, VIP lounges, showers, cookies, you name it. We sell it to them. That's how we make our money, you see. And so we have been very fortunate, why? Because the economy of Houston, and our job, as we see it, is to do what? It is to connect the people, the business, cultures, and the economies of the world to Houston. Why? Because our economy, the economy, drives growth. It is the economy, specifically energy. We are in the midst of an energy revolution with fracking that was founded in Houston, that is driving and is changing the dynamics in the energy field, in the energy industry, in the energy economy around the world. Today, prices are starting to drop. Why? Because the supply of that Houston, or the energy sector, US, led by Houston, is providing huge amounts of gas on the market. Gas is a competitor to petroleum, and so the prices of petroleum are coming down as the prices of gas are moving down. And Houston is now becoming energy independent. So what does that mean? It means that more companies want to be headquartered in Houston because they're in the energy field. More companies are moving into Houston because they want to do more oil exploration. They want to punch holes and pump out gas and sell it. And so what does that mean for us? It means that Houston has the energy capital of the world. And just, by the way, Houston's energy sector accounts today for no more than 38% of the economy of Houston. Whereas 10, 15, 20 years ago, it might have accounted for 55, 60%. We have diversified the economy. And, but these executives, every time there is a new discovery of oil, whether it's in Brazil or Colombia or Africa or Asia, those executives need to get there. They need to go there. And so we provide the airlines. When I first came in 2010, I said, I said to myself, we need to further connect Houston to the rest of the world. And we went out and we got Turkish Airlines to establish a new hub in Europe. We then went out and we got Air China. Beijing is the capital, not only the capital of China, but it's also the energy capital of China. And it makes sense to connect the energy capital of the United States with the energy capital of China, two huge economies, bring them together and make a connection. And then we went out, we got Scandinavian air service to provide direct service between Houston and Savannah, Norway. Why? Because that's another energy capital in Europe. And then we went, and then everyone says, hey, we want to come to Houston. Because they saw the value of the economy of Houston. And so we got, um, we got Korean Air to come in. We got Interjet from Mexico to come in. We got Air Mexico to expand. We got United to expand to um, Munich. Uh, United expanded with a second daily service to Tokyo. United is now, next week, um, going to fly its first flight between Houston and Santiago de Chile. And I can tell you today, well, wait, I'll say that for a minute, um, that before next year, before June of next year, we will be announcing, let's see now, um, two major Asian airlines that will be coming to Houston from Asia. We will be announcing a number of Latin American airlines, one of which is going to be coming from Colombia to Houston. And then we will be announcing major 
moves, make the connections out of this new airport hobby um, that I will speak to, which will become a new destination and a provider, a supplier, a new supplier of seats. But first, the importance of Latin America. Latin America is very important to Houston. You know, we like to say that Houston just happens to be the largest Latin American city that happens to be in the United States. But it's Latin America. <clears throat> and we will, because when you think about it, 7% of the population is Asian, 17% is African American, 38% is white, but 36%, as the mayor said this morning, close to 40% of the population is Latino. And it's individuals, business executives, people that have family, Colombians in Houston, I think the number is 20, 25,000, that they, they want to make connections back and forth. We need to provide these connections. And, and as you heard too, the Port of Houston in Houston is the number one destination for products coming out of Colombia by, by water uh, into the United States. It's very, very important. So the Latin American connection is very important. And so what we did then was we made a strategic decision that we needed to also have the ability to provide additional seats, supply of seats at low cost. Because when I came in and I took a look at what was going on in the city of Houston, there was one airline, one airline that had 95% of the traffic into Latin America. And so that one airline, if you were going to Bogota or Caracas, Venezuela, was going to charge you 1200 to 1500 And if you wanted to fly business class to Sao Paulo, if you could get a seat, it would cost you $12,000. And I said, well, wait a minute. This, this is crazy. Because how does an airport control the price of tickets? People say, you can't. Not possible, because you don't fly planes. Ah, but you do. Introduce competition. Bring in competition. And competition, use the economy, the economic laws, to drive and, and moderate the prices. And so we decided we were going to bring in new flights, new airlines, but more importantly, strategically, we have another airline at Hobby Southwest. And we talked to Southwest and we said, you need to be, if you're going to grow, you need to grow into Latin America. They said, why? I said, because you only fly 737s, my friend, and 737s don't make it across the Atlantic. You know, if you want to go international, better look south. And they said, mm, that's a good idea. So we said, let's convert Hobby from a domestic airport to an international airport. And that way you can use your planes because you see, the other point um, about um, the location of Houston, I'll say this, is that everyone in the United States and even in Houston and Texas, they look to the east and they see Miami and they look to the west and they see Los Angeles and they look to the north and they see Chicago and New York. Nobody looks south. Why? Because there is this huge wall called an international border. People can't get their minds beyond that. They can't see beyond this border. They see fences, and electric fences, and you know, um, border protection dogs racing after you, and it's craziness, I mean, just craziness. They don't see an economy. They don't see business. They don't see growth. Well, we do. We don't see a barrier. We see, looking south, our very next neighbor has a population of 112 million people. One of the fastest growing economies in all Latin America, that's Mexico. And we deal with it every day. Why not look at that and then look beyond Mexico and say, what else is down here? And you then come across the big economies of Latin America. And there are Brazil and Mexico, Colombia, Chile, um, Argentina. I mean, and Venezuela, I mean, we have to mention Venezuela. It has assets, it has oil, the second largest proven reserves of oil in the world. Now, bad management, maybe, but they have assets. And if they chose to, Venezuela could become a powerhouse tomorrow by use, good management, good management in, in the deployment of those assets. Make every Venezuelan a very wealthy person. Because you see, we have strategic location. Not only with respect to where we are 
in terms of the United States, either east or west, north or south. But we also have strategic location, as the mayor said, in that we have the, one of the best deep water ports in the United States, number one in cargo tonnage. We happen to have a set of rail lines that extend from Houston in every direction, radiating out to the entire United States. So if you have large cargo that needs to move by rail, they all start in Houston. As a matter of fact, if you look at the seal of Houston, you'll notice that in that seal, there's a railroad, little of the engine, um, a railroad engine as part of the seal. Why? Because railroads terminate in Houston and radiate out to the entire United States. We have a phenomenal roadway system that connects Houston to just about ed to every major city in the United States. But best of all, we have a phenomenal airport system, both regional, international, and an, and an international, full international airport that really provides Houston's uh, importance. Now we talked about Hobby and the $250 million investment. We're going to build a new international terminal there. Five gates, um, and again, it's going to be a regional international airport of the Americas, but we also have to remember about Bush. Bush is a continental airport. There, we have 125 gates, um, about 20 of those, 25 of those gates are international. The only problem is that of those 25 gates, about eight of those gates we control. The rest are controlled by one airline, United. And so we're going to be building a brand new international terminal, a 15 wide body. Four of those gates will be able to accommodate the A380. And why? Because in 2012, we brought in the uh, uh, Lufthansa's A380 to provide service between Houston and Frankfurt, Maine. This year, actually next week, Emirates Airlines will be bringing in their 380. And it's going to be a very nice A380 for those who want to. Why? Because if you want to take a shower at 38,000 feet, you can do it. If you want your own little room with nobody else, you will have it. If you want to be pampered, if you want to go, instead of staying in your room, you want a huge bar on the upper level of this aircraft. And drink with entertainment, live entertainment, you will have it. But you will pay $22,000, my friend. So you have a money burning a hole in your pocket, and you want to go to anywhere in the world. Emirates will take you there by way of Dubai or Hub aboard this beautiful aircraft called the A380. And that's what we need to do at Bush Continental, and also to expand cargo. So let me just say a few words about cargo. And cargo cost is the, re the reflection of the economy and what your economy produces. Now you will notice that we produce about 425,000 metric tons of cargo. And, and someone said, well, why is it so much less than Dallas, for example? And the reason is that when you take a look again at the economy of Houston and you ask what does Houston <coughs> produce, most of what Houston produced does not go by air. It's petrochemicals. It is plastics. It is manufacturing of heavy material. Um, some of those valves, huge valves for oil exploration, steel um, that is for piping, for oil drilling. That's what Houston produces, aggregate materials. And so what you see is the Port of Houston bringing in these huge amounts of supplies, and then you see rails going out with steel, with aggregates, with liquid chemicals, and then coming back, you see tractors that are being exported. You see cars that are being exported. You see all kinds of machinery that are being exported. Many of that, much of that goes by um, water. But there are two subsets that go by air. High value items and just in time items. People say, they see these huge cargo planes, I'll show you later. Um, the Antonov 124, the Antonov 225, Park there, huge, huge, huge aircraft, and they're loading on these very, very large turbines. You say, why in the world are they putting a turbine in an airplane when they can put a turbine in, a, in an airplane? 
Or why are they loading that big valve onto an airplane when they can put that big valve and at a fraction of the cost put it on a ship? The answer was very, very simple. That turbine, somebody, some country, some government around the world doesn't have any electricity. And they need it to now, they need it tomorrow, they can't wait 60, 90 days. That turbine has got to hit the ground, they've got to be plugged in, they've got to fire it up, and they've got to start producing electricity for their people. Or there's going to be a problem. You know, my lights went off. When are you going to turn my lights back on? That's what the cities do. And the other one is that valve, there's a platform somewhere, there's a drill rig somewhere that every day that that drill rig is down, it's costing hundreds of thousands of dollars, millions of dollars. The cost of putting that valve on that airplane is a penny. It gets lost in the background noise of what that company will suffer if that valve doesn't get there. So just in time and high value items are the cargo points. We have tremendous capacity um, at, in Houston. We've got over 10,000 acres. Um, this is our east uh, area complex. We can fit 27, 747, 400s at the same time, unload and load on the, in this area. It's just a tremendous capacity. And as I say, we've got um, these very, very large aircraft. What do you see there sitting at the 747, 800 freighter? And the reason is, is that the imports and exports, it's industrial machinery. It is machines that are either used in oil business or in manufacturing and electrical machinery that's produced. Steel, a lot of piping, a lot of finished um, steel products that have to be shipped, um, and other things that you see there. Just, I will um, just share with you that, again, creating a customer, that's what we always have to keep in mind, is the purpose of any business. And airports are no different from that perspective. Is you have to create a customer. And so one of the things that we're looking to do is to create this customer is to figure out, for example, how do we work with, and one of the reasons I'm here, um, is to ask how do we work with um, sponsors or with producers or with an entrepreneur in a place like Colombia that can here assemble flowers, produce, fish, and pharmaceuticals. Why? Because they are all just in time. And pharmaceuticals are high value. And they all need refrigeration. Who can we work with in Colombia to pull all these things together, whether in Bogota or in Barranquilla or Cartagena, wherever, and then be able to provide that we can work together because, you see, if you can create a customer that is someone here who can provide all these uh, products and services, we have the contracts in Houston. We've got the HEVs, we've got um, places like Sam's, Walmart, we've got uh, Kroger's, we've got all kinds of distributors in Houston. And we have the facilities, we have a full building here, 60,000 square feet of refrigerated space. Because then once we have the business deal, we have the customer finding an airline like that. You can talk to any airline and say, hey, provide an aircraft, 757 is the smallest aircraft that we would need. We would need you to fly once a week, or maybe twice a week, and this is what you're going to haul. You're going to bring these produce and flowers up, and we're going to bring in machinery, and uh, finished goods, metal goods, on going back. And you'll make a profit. Remember, it's not the airline doesn't create anything. The airline is in business to just transport what your economy will produce. And if you forget that, you will, ne you will be chasing airlines. But you should not be chasing airlines. You should be chasing customers. Because once you have the customers, the airlines are the easiest thing to find. They are just supplier of seats. And again, this is just a fresh cargo and a way that we say, if you can find a customer, if we can figure out together how to find someone. And here's the last point that I would make to you. So the job of the airport is to help the city and to help the government create a customer. Notice that in Houston, we have a huge port of port. 
We have rails and we have roadways and we have airports. And I, as the director of the airport,